All right, folks. I my voice is sort of back. I was a little bit sick, so my throat has been doing something funky. And since my voice is uh, sort of back, I figured I'm gonna do a couple of educational videos. And the first one, I want to revisit the subject of field of view and apparent field of view and perceived field of view, uh, stuff like that. It's discussed very frequently in good detail when we talk about binoculars, but somehow it's not, doesn't get a whole lot of mileage uh, with rifle scopes, at least it didn't until recently, because now I see a good number of uh, rifle scope designs that emphasize uh, a good field of view. Uh, is it important? Yeah, to a certain degree, right? The more expensive of a rifle scope, the more uh, I'm particular uh, about field of view. For example, a while back when I was looking at uh, fancy scopes, I kind of deemed colors of a field of view being narrow. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were complaining that it's not fair. Maybe it's not, but for three grand, I want good field of view. It doesn't, there's still variants, some are wider than others, uh, and all of that sort of stuff. But uh, nothing for three grand should be really all that narrow, right? The standouts in terms of field of view traditionally were the original Premier Design and now uh, Minox and Tangent Theta. The new March scopes are even wider than that while still uh, uh, maintaining compact size. Um, uh, there are a few others uh, here and there. But one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, field of view not only has to be wide, it needs to be usable, right? And it also needs to be perceived in, a, in, a, in the right way. And how field of view is perceived by your eye is, um, uh, uh, is sort of a funky thing. So let's see, uh, do I have a scope I can use to define a few things? I, let's take this. So this is my uh, sort of a standard uh, tripod fixture that I use, you know, I'll put this thing up on a tripod and then I, I look at the scope side by side. And there are two scopes here, there's my favorite Tangent Theta 5 to 25, right? And this is a Delta Striker 4.5 to 30. I don't know why they're side by side. I was looking at them for some reason. Okay, so when you're looking at a rifle scope, what the rifle scope sees, right, the field of view that uh, comes into the objective, that's the real field of view. What your eye sees through the eyepiece, right? The size of the object is a real field of view, but what the eyepiece itself attends in front of your eye, that is the apparent field of view. And perceived field of view is just simply how it looks to you, and that is somewhat... Let me put this down. And that is uh, somewhat... Uh, ouch. It's a very hard scope on my toe. Uh, and how you perceive it is in many ways subject to how your brain processes information. And that is always a little bit of a wild card because depending on the conditions and environment and all that, your brain can perceive it in a very, um, in a very different manner. Okay. Right. With the definitions out of the way, I conveniently printed them out for you. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, about the relationship between them. So the apparent field of view, in the simplest terms, is the real field of view uh, multiplied by magnification. For example, if you have real, I don't know, one degree field of view on 20 power, is that correct? Okay, let's say this. If on 20 power the scope really sees one degree, the apparent field of view will be 20 degrees. 20 degrees is a pretty common eyepiece design. Apparent field of view in many ways comes down to uh, internal optical design, but it's limited by the size of the eyepiece, right? So you can, your field of view can be up to what the eyepiece subtends, 
but the optics may be smaller wherever else, right? You may be seeing a large black uh, a black ring around your image. Okay, but the relationship between the real field of view and apparent field of view is fixed, right? They are just real field of view time quantification is your apparent field of view. Now the perceived field of view is uh, where things really, really start to get entertaining. For example, so here are, I don't know if you can see both circles well, I'll check on the video, two circles with exactly the same inner diameter. One has a thick border around it, one has a thin border around it. And this is your field of view through the eyepiece, although the actual field of view you see is exactly the same, the one with the thin border will look, uh, uh, will look larger to you. Okay? It's just the way we perceive because the brain can't quite make sense of this thick ring uh, around the image, so the field of view will physically look narrow. It might even look like it's less magnified. That's how significant this effect is. But if you measure it and if you pay attention to how much detail you actually see, uh, this and this will give you the same amount of detail. But with this, it will look wider, it will just stand right in front of you, and you'll be able to pick things out inside more easily because your eye is not trying to focus or resolve this black ring around the image that is much closer to you. That is a fundamental problem. It's not just the fact that it's thick, it's the fact that it's there and it's difficult to ignore. If you were able to ignore this thick black ring around the image entirely, right, it, it, this and this would look the same, but you can't. And what happens is, if your rifle scope eyepiece is adjusted the right way, that means whatever you're looking at looks like it's coming from far away, and the muscles in your eye are relaxed, that's what makes for a relaxing view, or one of the things, are relaxed and focused on something distant. That's the relaxed uh, uh, muscle tension in your eye. The fact that there is something really prominent on the eyepiece makes a difference because this prominent thing is much closer to you when your brain tries to resolve and figure out what that thing is and we are sort of genetically we have genetically evolved to be really concerned about things that are close to us right if you are watching out for danger danger that is really really far away from you is much less of a pertinent uh, thing than the danger that's really close to you so we really pay attention to things that are close to us. It's completely, uh, uh, it's completely uh, involuntary, right? So because this black ring usually comes from the eyepiece, well, it's a different kind of tunneling. I'll talk about that later, right? Because this tunneling, this black ring comes from the eyepiece and it is physically close to you, your eye keeps on wanting to switch to something really close to you and lose focus on something that you've been looking at before. Uh, human eye is not really good in staying fixed in one position, right? That's not how we evolve. We evolve to scan all over the place all the time. And in order to f sort of trick your eye and your brain to focus on what you need to be focusing on, you need to give it something to look at that's in the ballpark of what uh, or in the ballpark of what you're actually trying to see. So you want your eye to be roaming around the actual scene looking through the scope, like looking at different things there, rather than shifting focus all the time to look at the eyepiece. Okay. And that kind of thing really helps. Um, one of the things that creates this black ring around the image is uh, eye cups. Right? When you put flip up eye cap on a scope, frequently the weights I design, if they're oversized, they have a bunch of stuff hanging on them, that will increase this black ring around the image. Excuse me. And um, with uh, low power rifle scopes, for example, where you may need to uh, acquire the target and shoot very, very quickly, you really want to think whether you want to have a permanently mounted. Uh, a scope cap on there because if it significantly increases the black ring you see around the image it may actually slow you down. Do some practice with it. Right? This is also one of the reasons why having a wide, wide uh, apparent field of view rifle scope is fairly important. The 
further this black rim is away from the center, the less your uh, the less your eye and your brain will be paying attention to. Okay. Hope all of this makes sense. Right? But anyhow, so, but that's how a perceived field of view relates to a apparent field of view. Sometimes an actually narrow field of view with less of a border around it will look larger to you at the first glance than a wider field of view with a thick border around it. With actual rifle scopes, the best uh, example of this perce perceived field of view business is probably well with the original Hensel designs that had this minimized black ring around the image. It looks like the magnified image is just floating in front of your eye. And with more modern designs, it's a ZCO, zero compromise optics, right? They have a really, really nice uh, uh, eyepiece design where the border around the image is really minimized. Okay? And that makes a uh, pretty significant difference. The actual real field of view of that scope is fairly wide, but it's not the widest, right? Uh, there are several designs like Tangent, Minox, uh, New March that are uh, appreciably wider, but because the Z ZCO, ZCO, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, ZCO, let's, call it, let's go with that, because ZCO has this eyepiece design that makes the image float in front of you, everybody is convinced that it's a very wide field of view, when in reality it's perfectly reasonable, but it's not that wide. And uh, you know, how do I know it's not that wide? I had one here and I measured it. So I have a, um, I have a plot that I can show you. But uh, I looked at the function of field of view uh, as a function of magnification and all that sort of jazz. I'll probably do a video on that next. And uh, uh, what I found was that its field of view looks huge, but in reality it's not all that huge. It's reasonable, but it's not super wide. Okay? So that's kind of how field of view works. If you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. I am going to try to do a few more videos while my kids are being fairly quiet, so there isn't too much background noise. I hope you can see this and hear this uh, well enough. And uh, once again, if you have questions, uh, ask in the comments or contact me through the website that goes straight to my email. I'm on a bunch of forums. I'm not far to find. If you search for uh, Dark Lord of Optics, pop up like Beetlejuice somewhere. Uh, please do not hesitate to ask. All the topics I get for the different videos that I do usually come out of the questions that I'm asked. So do not hesitate. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate your time.